time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and you're probably wondering why all of these giant screens behind me are turned off. Normally I have them turned on with a really cool background on them and stuff, and it really adds to the video, but today we can't do that. And you wanna know why? Because my UPS, that's right, my uninterruptible power source decided to die. So uh, I guess it wasn't very uninterruptible after all. Well, it turns out it had a battery warning. So it's basically saying that the batteries inside of the unit are dead. So now it's basically a glorified power strip. Now, when you're dealing with a huge computer like I have with the Xeons and all these giant screens and everything, you would be stupid not to use a UPS to protect your investment. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna take apart that UPS, I'm gonna take the batteries out of it, and then we're gonna take a little field trip to the battery store to get some new ones, pop them in, and get this whole thing back online so I can start making videos again. Including this one. All right, so this particular UPS that I have here is actually a rack mount unit, meaning it's designed to go into an actual rack and is considered more of a commercial UPS. Now, I picked this up about a year ago online from somebody who sold it for pennies on the dollar because it was literally sitting in an attic for a year. And when I plugged it in, it gave me intermittent battery warnings on the LCD, but it worked okay. But just a while ago, it started doing this random thing where it would just die. The UPS would just turn off in the middle of the night and then when I turned it on, it would give me a battery warning for about 30 seconds and then it would show full capacity again. So that tells me that one of the batteries or both of the batteries in this are shorted or busted internally somehow. Another good way to know if your UPS batteries are dead or just literally unplug the UPS. When you unplug it, everything should still be powered and it should give you some kind of a warning. Now on this UPS, when I unplug it, it instantly powers off. It doesn't even stay powered for a second, which tells me that it's not even using the batteries that are inside of it right now. Now don't let the size fool you. This looks like it's a pretty small unit, but it actually weighs almost 70 pounds because it's full of lead acid batteries. Now the nice thing about the rack mount units is all you have to do is pull off. Let's see if I can pick this damn thing up pull off this front plate and it exposes the battery box. That way you can change out the batteries in these without having to pull them out of the racks. Now, if you have one of the conventional UPSs that you have like on a desktop computer, you usually have to take out two or four screws in the back and take the whole top off the unit to replace the battery. That's why I prefer these units, but they cost a lot of money if you're not lucky like me and just found one. Also, I'd like to make it known that I've never replaced the batteries in this style of UPS before. So if I make some mistakes along the way, I'll let you know. All right, so first of all, we have a caution here that basically tells us that there's a risk of electrical shock because the batteries themselves are not isolated from the unit. Also, it gives me the battery model down here, which is an RBP842, and that's the battery I'm gonna be looking for to replace these. All right, let's start off by taking some screws out of this bad boy. All right, so you can see here we have the negative and positive terminals connecting the battery pack to the actual UPS. So we're gonna go ahead and start by disconnecting those. There we go, so now the battery tray is disconnected. Now we're gonna pull out the four screws on the tray. Feels like these have never been unscrewed. Now another cool little trick too is I've seen people take these UPSs apart and actually take the two six volt batteries and replace them with the 12 volt car battery externally and then you get massive more runtime. Now it can be a little bit more complicated than that but it's an experiment that I wanna try so let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing that. Okay, all the screws are out so now I'm gonna pull the battery drawer. It's very heavy as you might imagine. All right, now you can see how this UPS, look, that's all battery right there. So of the total size of the UPS, just one giant, and this is where all the weight is right here. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and open up the battery box here, and it looks like there's just one screw on the lid right here on the back. Ooh, there might be a screw behind this. Yep, look at that. And I noticed that this, this was peeled back a little bit, so I think the batteries have been replaced in this once before. But I don't care, it's an $800 UPS uh, new, and I think I, I paid 200 bucks for it, and the replacement batteries for it shouldn't be that expensive. Okay, open in the battery box. Oh wow, I didn't expect this. Most uh, desktop UPSs only have two batteries in it. This sucker's got four of the HR912 batteries in it. These things are m massive. No wonder this thing weighs so much. All right, so now that I have the batteries actually out, I have to disconnect the terminals, but I wanna make sure I don't put the terminals in wrong when I get the new batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out my phone and I'm gonna take some pictures. This is something I recommend doing on every project where you're not 100% sure what you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna start disconnecting the terminals. Careful not to touch anything metal. More pictures. Okay, that's one battery out. Let's 
two batteries out. Again, taking more pictures. You can never have too many pictures. Because you can see these cables are just loose in here, so it'd be very easy to hook these things up wrong again. Unless you're an electrical engineer, then you probably know better. All right, so all the batteries are disconnected. Go ahead and pull that one out. Pull that one out. And now we have an empty battery tray. All right, one other quick observation that I made is that two of the batteries actually have pads on the side of them. Since the others don't have it, that tells me when I go buy new batteries, they are not gonna come with pads installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pads off and reuse them. Or, or not. Nice and slow, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady. Okay, so it's not perfect, but like anybody's gonna see it. Come on, you little turd. Get off there. Ah, oh, hell, good enough. Now you might be wondering why I took the batteries out of the UPS before I went and bought new batteries. Cause what if they're not in stock or something like that? I'm gonna tell you why. Because when you go to buy batteries, if you bring the old dead batteries with you, you usually get a massive discount. Sometimes as much as like 30 or 40% off the new batteries just by giving them the old ones that you would just throw in the garbage anyways. And by throwing the garbage, I mean recycle responsibly. Be responsible. All right, now that we've torn everything apart, all we need to do is get some new batteries in it. Off to the battery store. This looks like a good place to get some batteries. All right guys, so I'm back home with the new battery. This is the new one, the Duracell Ultra that I have here. And here's the old one that's a B&B &B battery. To give you guys some context to replace these with the same battery, these guys over here are only about 13 bucks a pop, whereas these are about $41. So they were the most expensive battery they had. And they're nine amp hour, I believe the other one is also rated at nine amp hour, but I just wanted to see if there was any appreciable difference in how long the batteries last over time. It's just kind of a personal experiment I'm running. And honestly, since I'm dealing with a UPS that's worth about $800, it made a lot of sense just to spend a little extra money and put the best batteries in it that I could. Also, while I was there, I had them test the four batteries that I brought in, and one of the batteries was in fact internally shorted and showing a very, very low voltage. But the other three batteries still seem to be showing an okay voltage, so I'm gonna hang on to them for a future project. All right, it's time to start reassembling the new battery pack with the Duracell batteries. And for that, we're gonna reference our pictures that we took earlier. Now, this is very, very important. Any project you're working on where you don't know a lot about it, I am not an electrical engineer, I don't know the configuration and series in which these batteries are run, it's important to take pictures because sometimes finding this information online can be very, very difficult. And even when you do, it can be very confusing. This will make sure that I install the batteries exactly as they came out of the unit. And that should prevent magic smoke. All right, so according to the picture, the first two batteries in the front actually go face down. Just like a so. And then those little rubber pads go between the batteries. So we're just gonna stick one on here. There's the other one on here. There we go, rebuilding the battery pack. Never done this before. And then the next two batteries, according to my documentation that I have here, go face up to put the terminals close to each other. And the pads prevent the batteries from moving around. Okay, so I'm gonna pull these two batteries out. And then referencing my picture, it looks like the black wire loops around the bottom two terminals and connects them in series. Check twice so we don't have any fire, otherwise this will be a viral video. Okay, so that's negative to positive on that loop. And then it looks like the positive goes into the top of the flipped batteries terminal, just like so. So the red going in, then we have the loop and then we have the blue coming out of the top. Just like this. All right, so far everything's looking good. So now the back row is wired. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop these into place. Carefully not to short the terminals. Otherwise you're gonna have a bad day. Okay, so now the blue wire comes between these batteries. It comes down and then connects to the bottom terminal of the face up battery. Okay, just like that and then loops around and connects to this one. Okay, still no fire, this is a good thing. Okay, and the final picture shows the black wire coming around to the black terminal. So this goes like this. And then it comes around and connects onto the top terminal, right here. So it's another one that loops around. Still no fire. And actually, I'm gonna put this one on first because it's a little bit tricky. It goes on like that. Everything is very, very snugly fitted together in this pack so that things don't move around. Even the wires, the wire spacing is very, very tight. 
So we're going to go like this, and then we're going to plug that back into this guy. All right. And there we have one completed pack. Okay, so now we just have to put the protective lid back on, and this is all like heavy duty metal. Careful when you're doing this not to pinch any wires. Make sure they're all pushed into the edges and nothing is pinched because if you're pinching a wire, you might have a fire hazard. There we go, that fits together beautifully. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put our screws back in. Now I have to say, I really do like this design over a standard desktop UPS because usually the desktop UPS, you have to take the whole case off the thing and it can be tricky, especially with the APCs to get at some of the battery packs inside. I like the fact that this all pulls out. It's just one box that's just full of batteries. That's a really nice design. All right, I think she's ready to go back into the main housing. So let's go ahead and position it here. Dealing with quite a bit of weight. Slide it in, make sure we don't break any of the connectors. There we go, that is beautiful. Now before we connect up the leads, I wanna make sure that we have all the screws in that we're gonna cover. All right, now before I connect up the leads on this, I wanna make sure that the power button is off. And you can tell on this particular model by it's out when it's off and then it's pushed in when it's in. So it's, so it's a two phase button. And you can see it lit up a little bit when I touched it the first time just from residual voltage. Okay, so now it's off so I can safely connect the leads. Here we go. Hey, look at that, no smoke. So far, so good. Now what I'm gonna do right now is since I have the leads connected, just to make sure that we don't have a problem and have to tear the whole thing apart again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the power button. Now these batteries already have a mild charge on them from the factory, so this unit should power up. Now remember, with the old batteries in this, with the shorted cell that I had in there, this thing would not power up unless it was plugged into the wall. So if we see this thing power on, we're good. That's a great sign. I hear beeping. This is, I can, I can there it goes. I can hear the fans. And we're showing an initial capacity of about 80% charge. So these have a good charge on them already. So I can already tell it's working because this has never done this uh, before when the power's out. As soon as you unplug the unit, it, it, it would just die. So we've completely refurbished this thing back to new. So we're gonna go ahead and put this little protector on here to keep the connector from coming undone. It looks like they pretty well go out of their way to make sure that the batteries are encased in as much metal as possible. Just in case, you know, you do have a short and the battery swells and explodes, you don't burn your house down. All right, now we're just gonna pop the faceplate back on her. And there you go, for about $180 with tax, I completely refurbished this unit back to brand new with brand new Duracell Ultra batteries. So better batteries than what it shipped with from the factory. Now I could have refurbished this unit for about $50 had I bought the wholesale B&B battery packs um, that were originally in it. But like I said, I wanted to try something new and see how it works. And plus I have a $10,000 computer connected to this thing along with three 50 inch 4K panels. So it's worth spending a little bit of extra money just to make sure this baby's got the best. Now I normally keep all my UPSs installed under my desk because it's one of those pieces of technology that you really don't need to be visible. People don't have to see it. And it's nice to keep them out of the way where all the power cables are. So I'm gonna go ahead and get under here and reinstall it and then we'll test it out. All right guys, I have the UPS hooked up under the desk, plugged back into the 20 amp breaker. And then I have all my computer stuff, the main computer, the three screens, and all the peripherals plugged into it. So now the moment of truth. Is everything going to turn on? Okay, so the screens turn on. How about the high load of the computer? The blue light's on. So you can see right there, the battery is full, the battery capacity. You also notice I turned the screen around. I just realized that you could pop the screen out and rotate it on this particular model. But we're showing full battery capacity. The computer is running just fine. But the real test is when we unplug it from the wall, is everything still gonna be running? Let's try that. All right, here we go. Before when I unplug this, everything would turn off. Let's see. Oh, now we're getting beeps. You can see it clearly shows that we're on battery right now with full capacity and look at that load. It's got a huge load on it from the computer. Let's check the screens. All right, as you can see, everything's working. All three 50 inch 4K panels and my huge dual Xeon Beast are all running off of battery right now. Before, if the power even flickered, the UPS would drop out because of the short that was in the battery inside of it and just how old it was. And you can hear the beeps right there. That's saying, hey, I'm on battery, waiting for power to come back. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back into the wall and all's well, this is great. Ah, there we go, guys, plugged back into the wall. I heard the click, it seamlessly clicked over. No flickering, nothing. This is awesome. All right, guys, so now you've seen just how simple it is to replace the batteries in a UPS. Now, if you have a different brand of UPS, uh, whether it be like an APC, a Cyber Power, or some weird off-brand, they all share something in common, and that is they all use these sealed lead-acid batteries. They might use different types, 
but they all use these sealed lead acid batteries and you can crack those suckers open and replace the batteries and get them back to a fully new working condition, which is fantastic because I've gone to so many thrift stores and seen UPS sitting there for like five bucks, 10 bucks, and you know the battery's shot in them. But if you can go spend another 30 bucks and refurbish the thing back to new versus paying 150, 250, 350, or in my case, $800 for a big one, that's, that's a huge savings for a little bit of work. So I highly recommend that all of you, when you have a UPS that goes bad, do not go throw it in the garbage and buy a new one. Pull it apart, take the batteries out, go to a Batteries Plus or some other spot or on the internet, you can order them all. So I have some links in the video description on places you can buy batteries and install them yourself. It's totally worth it. You save a ton of money. And like I did, I actually put battery, better batteries in it than what came with it. So now I've got Duracell Ultra batteries in there. So now I have a lot more faith in that system working better when the time comes. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this completely unexpected video that just jumped up on my plate this morning when I found my computer turned off and it wouldn't turn back on and found out it was because my UPS batteries were shot. You guys have to realize these UPSs, when they sit around at full charge forever, the batteries do eventually go dead after a couple of years, you know, probably two to five years, depending on how bad you're draining them and charging them back up again. But the batteries will go dead. And I know a lot of people throw them away or donate them or, you know, free cycle them or whatever, and then get no, don't do that. Just go buy the batteries and install them yourself. Trust me, you saw how easy it was for me to do it. And as long as you take a pictures, if you, as long as you take pictures of the wiring as you're taking it out, you're not going to have any problem putting it back together. Trust me, even somebody that's afraid of electricity should be comfortable doing this as long as you have the pictures. And whatever you do, don't put metal things across the contacts on the batteries because they might like swell up and catch fire and blow limbs off and burn your house down. Um, if that happens though, you didn't hear it here, okay? That means that you did not follow the directions and it's your fault, not my fault. Do you understand? I just want to make that clear because this is like the new America where everybody's like, you know, suing everybody for everything. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Till next time. Oh yeah, and I still have the three old batteries that are still somewhat good. So I think I might come up with a project to use these for. What do you guys think? You ready for another jerry-rigged? Let me know down in the comments. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>